Hi guys, Mang Adlong. For today's video, I will be presenting to you about determining intercepts, zeros, and asymptotes of an exponential functions. When we say intercepts, it is a point where the graph will cross the x-axis and the y-axis. In the case of x-axis, that is called x-intercept. In the case of y-axis, that is called the y-intercept. And the zero of an exponential function is the value of x that would equate the exponential function to, to zero. And of course, the asymptote, I already have mentioned about the asymptotes in my previous video, it is the line in which the graph will approach closer and closer but will never cross. Okay? So before we proceed to the examples, let us have first the objective for this video. At the end of this video, you should be able to determine the intercepts, of course, the x-intercept and the y-intercept, the zero and the asymptotes of an exponential function. Of course, this lesson requires us to have a prior knowledge in the following. Graphing exponential functions, representing exponential function through a graph and a table of values, and of course, finding the domain and range of an exponential function. I already have videos about this lesson, so better you watch for my video about this lesson. So let's start. Let us have first the standard, let us review first the standard form of an exponential function, which is defined by f of x is equal to b raised to x. Okay, the standard form of exponential function, where the b should be greater than zero, this b should be greater than zero, but the b should not be equal to zero. And of course, the domain for this function are all real numbers, or it is from negative infinity up to the positive infinity. And for the range, we have from zero up to positive infinity. That is for this st uh, standard form for exponential function. Now the translated form, or the translation of the exponential function is defined by this function we have here f of x equals a times b raised to x minus h plus k again i already have discussed about this translation in my previous video about plotting the graph of the exponential function and of course finding the domain and range of the exponential function so we have here the a the b the h and the k. The h here is the horizontal translation of the graph and the k is the vertical translation of the graph. And of course, our domain is still the same from negative infinity up to positive infinity. Now for the range, we have two conditions here with regards to the value of a. The first condition is that if a is greater than zero, our range should start from the value of k up to positive infinity. By the way, the value of k is the asymptote of the graph. Again, if a is greater than 0, our range shall start from the value of k up to positive infinity. And the second condition is that if a, the value of a here is less than 0, meaning negative value, a is less than 0, our range shall start from negative infinity up to the value for k, which is the asymptote of the exponential function. Okay, let's proceed to the examples. First example, which is a graph. See, for example, we are given this graph. This is the horizontal asymptote, which is the line y equals negative 4. And our graph is like this if we are going to analyze the graph try to check the graph the graph this is our x-axis and this is our y-axis the graph cross the x-axis at this point which is 5 and at the same time the graph cross the y-axis at this point which is negative 3 and since we have here our horizontal asymptote, which is this line, of course, this graph will approach this line closer and closer, but will never cross this line. 
So if we are going to find the x-intercept for this graph, since the x-intercept and the y-intercept are points, again, these are points in which the graph will cross the x-axis and the y-axis. So in the case of x-intercept, it is the point where the graph crosses the x-axis. For this example, the graph crosses the x-axis at this point here, which is 5 and 0. So therefore, this point here is the point 5 and 0. So that means our x-intercept is 5 and 0. The point 5, 0. This is 5, 0. And of course, the y-intercept is the point 0, negative 3. So this is 0, negative 3. This point is 0, negative 3. And the 0 of the function is the value of x that would make the function 0 or that would equate the function 0. In this case, the x value of the x-intercept or that is x equals 0. And the asymptote is very clear in this graph which is y equals negative 4. Okay. Now let's proceed to example number 2. So we are given this graph and you are to find the x-intercept, the y-intercept, the zero of the function, and the asymptote. So if we are going to analyze the graph, we have here our horizontal asymptote, which is the y equals 4. This is 6, 5, and 4. So our horizontal asymptote is the line y equals 4, and this is our graph. Now for the x-intercept, let's try to observe that the graph cross the point 0, 4, this point here. Oh, by the way, the graph cross the x-axis at point 4, 0. So our x-intercept is 4 and 0. Now for the y-intercept, our graph cross the y-axis at 3. So that means our y-intercept is 0, the point 0 and 3. And of course, the zero of the function, we take the x value here, which is 4. So the zero of the function is x equals 4. And of course, the asymptote of the graph or the asymptote of the function is y equals 4. Now let's proceed to example number 3. We have this graph. We have this asymptote, which is y equals 1. And if we are going to analyze this graph, we have this asymptote. This graph will move closer and closer to this asymptote but will never cross this line. So now, since our x-axis is here, so there is no way that this graph will cross the asymptote. And of course, since this will not cross the asymptote, that goes to follow that this graph will not also cross the x-axis. So there is no way that this graph can cross the x-axis. So therefore, for this specific graph, our, we have no x-intercept. So our x-intercept is none. Why? Because no matter how long we will extend the line, moving this graph closer and closer to this asymptote, this will never cross this asymptote. So more so, it will, this will not cross the x-axis. Now for the y-intercept, let's try to check. This is the x-axis. This is the y-axis. Our graph cross the y-axis at the point 0, 2. This is 2. This is 1 and this is 2. So our y-intercept is 0 and 2. Now for the 0 of the function, since our graph will not cross the x-axis, so the 0 of the function is, of course, none. The same as with the x-intercept. And the asymptote is, of course, y equals 1. Now let's proceed to example number four. How about if we are not given a graph, but we are given a function? Say for example, you are given f of x equals 3 raised to x plus 1 minus 81. The k here, which is negative 81, is our asymptote. Okay, the k, the value for k is our asymptote. Now let's solve for the x-intercept. Since we do not have a graph, so we cannot identify, we cannot observe the graph for the x and y-intercept. So what we need to do to solve for the x-intercept is we just simply 
set the value for f of x to 0. So this f of x, we will set this one to 0. So this will become 0, which is the, the value for the f of x, we set that to 0, equals, we copy this side of the equation, which is 3 raised to x plus 1 minus 81. Now to solve for x, we have here the negative 81. We use addition property, so we use addition property. We will add 81 here. We will also add 81 at the left side. So negative 81 plus 81 is 0 or cancelled out. And this will become, since we add 81, we also add 81 at this side of the equation. So we have 81 equals 3 raised to x plus 1. So this time, we will set 81 to the base 3 so that we can have an equal base at the right side of the equation. So this 81 can be expressed as 3 raised to 4. Why 3 raised to 4? Because when we multiply 3 4 times, that means 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27, and 27 times 3 is 81. So therefore, 81 can be written as 3 raised to 4. In this case, they already have the same base, so we just simply equate the exponent. So we can have 4 equals x plus 1. Then, subtraction property, we will subtract 1 here. We will also subtract 1 at the left side of the equation. So this becomes 4 minus 1. Since we will subtract 1, so this becomes 0. So what remains at the right side of the equation must be x. Then 4 minus 1 is 3, so therefore our x is equal to 3. So since our y is 0, since our f of x is 0, so therefore our x-intercept is the point 3, 0. Now let's proceed to the y-intercept. The reverse, if we solve for the y-intercept, we set the value of x to 0. This time our x is 0 and we will solve for the f of x or the y. We have to remember that f of x is always equal to y. So therefore, instead of writing x here, we will change that to 0. So we can write this function as f of x equals 3 raised to our x is 0. So plus 1, we copy plus 1, we copy minus 81. Then we simplify. 0 plus 1 is, of course, 1. So this becomes 3 raised to 1 minus 81. And 3 raised to 1 is 3 minus 81 is negative 78. So therefore, our f of x is equal to negative 78. Therefore, our y-intercept would be 0, which is the x, and the y, which is negative 78. So our x-intercept is 3 and 0. And the y-intercept is 0 and negative 78. Now, what is our 0 of the function? What value of x that will make this function 0? Of course, we will take the value of x here, which is x equals 3. So the 0 of the function is x equals 3. And the asymptote is, of course, the value of k, which is y equals negative 81. Let's proceed to the last example. For example, we are given this function. f of x equals 2 raised to x plus 3 plus 32. So the same. We solve for the x-intercept. We set the value of f of x to 0. So we set this one to 0. So that becomes 0 equals 2 raised to x plus 3 plus 32. Now this is now 0. We will use subtraction property at the right side of the equation. So we will subtract 32 here and we will also subtract 32 at the left side. So this becomes negative 32 equals, this will be cancelled out. So we have 2 raised to x plus 3. And this time, we will change negative 32 to the base 2. So how much is negative 32 to exponential to the base 2? So we can write this one as negative 2 raised to 5. Why? Because when we express 
32 to the base 2, we can have negative 2 raised to 5. We multiply 2 5 times, that gives us 32. Now, this time, as you can see the base, we have here negative 2 and positive 2, meaning they are not equal. Take note again, if the base are not equal, we cannot equate the exponent. Now, if we are going to analyze this equation, the power for every exponential equation must always be greater than zero. There is in no way that your power, the value here, should be negative. It has to be greater than zero. And since this is negative, this is less than zero, meaning we have no x-intercept. Okay, we have no x-intercept. What does this mean? Meaning, if we are to plot the graph of this function, this graph will never cross the x-axis. Okay, this graph will not cross the x-axis. Okay, and if there is no x-intercept, therefore, the zero of the function is also none. There is also no zero of the function because the graph of this function will never cross the x-axis. Okay, let's proceed to the y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, we set the value of x to 0. So we have f of x is equal to 2 raised to 0 plus 3 plus 32. 2 raised to 0 plus 3, or that is 2 raised to 2. Or by the way, that is 2 raised to 3 plus 32. 2 cubed is 8. We simplify. 2 cubed is 8 plus 32. That is 40. So f of x is equal to 40 or our y is equal to 40. So the y-intercept therefore is 0 and 40. Since x is 0, so this is 0. And our y is 40. And the asymptote must be y equals positive 32. Okay? Okay. That's it. We have examples 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, before I go, let us have first the practice exercise. So, find the intercepts, zeros, and asymptotes of the following functions. So, number 1, number 2, number 3, number 4, and of course, number 5, you are given this graph. What is the x-intercept? the y-intercept, the zeros of the function, the asymptotes of the function. Okay, I hope again you have learned something about this video. Before I go, I want you to ponder on this code. Do your best, strive to the challenge, and learn. So again, do not forget to subscribe, like, and share to your friends who are grade 11 students. Thank you and God bless.